Hey guys, it's Nate Story here with Bright Agritech, and today we're going to talk about the Nutra Test. So this is a cool little nutrient tester um, that we started using a while back, and um, we were having some issues with our IntelliDose, no fault of the IntelliDose. Someone had actually knocked it, the EC meter out, and it was misreading our EC. So we'd actually dosed our system way up to like 4.4. 4. Um, our EC was just, it was basically just way out of control. And um, we used our little Nutra test to diagnose the fact that someone had screwed our other EC meter uh, up. So for us, it's kind of a backup tool to make sure that everything's running correctly. But we also use it to test our seedling system. We use it to test uh, different hydroponic uh, little things that we have set up in the office here and there. And so it's just generally a useful little tool for measuring pH, EC, and temperature. So um, earlier when I started shooting this video, I was informed that I was doing it wrong and we need to calibrate the thing. So I'm gonna walk you guys through uh, calibration. Basically this just came right out of the box, right? Um, I just screwed on the uh, EC, or the, I guess the pH probe here. Uh, the pH probe just goes right on just like that. Um, simple little deal. And then you turn the sucker on. And um, it turns on pretty easily. Uh, when you guys get it out of the box, uh, it takes a little time to boot up, and then you're gonna start getting readings like right out of the gate. And um, so what you wanna do with this is, to start, you wanna calibrate it. So these probes, um, they'll come like this. this. This pH probe will be in a little vial of solution. That's because it cannot dry out. You cannot let your pH probe dry out. If it dries out, it gets ruined, okay? It won't ever measure correctly again. You're gonna have to throw it away and buy a new $50 probe or what have you. Um, the EC one, you can let it dry out. You know the EC one because it's usually a little bit thicker. It's got the two little black dots at the bottom. That's what's measuring the current through the water or the amount of salts in the water, which gives us our EC reading, okay? So um, with these two probes, you basically plug them in and uh, like I said with the pH meter, you always want to keep it uh, nice and um, just keep it moist, okay? So I've got it in just a little cup of water for right now, okay? So that's in a cup of water, very, very simple. And now because they've come out of the box, theoretically, we have to um, calibrate it. So to calibrate these things, you see it's already giving us measurements, temperature, uh, EC, and pH. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna calibrate the EC. I know the EC meter is pretty much dead on right now, but we're gonna do it anyway. So um, to do this, we just hit menu, okay? Um, calibrate, we hit select, EC, select. It's gonna say buffer, 2.77, press up, down. And um, so we're gonna basically take our little EC probe out here, and we're gonna stick it in there. Oh, this is why I hate calibration. Chris, what did you put it in? I put it in an EC solution. So this is a 2.77 uh, solution of EC. And uh, so it's in the buffer. Start calibration. We're just going to hit start. OK? So it tells you to wait now 20 seconds. You just have to keep that little probe in there. Well, make sure it's you know under the surface of the solution. Uh, I'm kind of skimpy here because I don't like reordering this stuff very often. But just make sure it stays in there, it's, it's in the solution, it's measuring. And you're going to wait till it counts down, three, two, one, calibration complete, okay? So that's done. And um, I'm going to grab a little bit of water right now just to make sure that I can keep these things dry after I calibrate them. All right, so that's EC. EC is calibrated at this point, and um, I don't wanna let that pH meter dry out. Now it's time to calibrate pH. So we're gonna go down to pH, we're gonna hit select, and pH seven buffer, okay? So I've got pH, or pH seven buffer right here. Start calibration, start. So we're just gonna wait while that calibrates. Counts down 17, 16. And the reasoning for this is that it needs to be in there, it needs to get it's measuring like once every millisecond or something, right? So it 
builds this huge kind of data set, and then it averages all of those readings uh, because it knows it's gonna end up with a pH of 7.01 once it all averages out. And so the idea here is that these probes go off over time. Now pH, place in pH four buffer. Okay, so we're gonna switch it over to pH four. Continue. And it's just gonna count down. Uh, you will have to buy calibration solutions separately. Um, it lasts quite a long time. So you don't actually have to calibrate super often. If you're using the probes a lot, if you're keeping them like in solution, then you don't have to calibrate them all the time. But um, we're almost done here. One, calibration complete. So we are done calibrating. I'm gonna go back. I'm not gonna calibrate. This, I need bigger cups. So um, basically at this point we're done. So we know that it's all, <laughs> this is the worst. Um, so it's, it's, it should be good now. So uh, I can go over and I can get a, a water sample. When we measure it, we know that we're on. So um, I actually had this thing running before uh, we started this video and uh, I took it dry out of the box, plugged it in, and these were the exact same measurements I was getting pre-calibration as post-calibration. That won't always be the case, okay? So um, a lot of the time as it sits there, as it's uh, in its box, it will, it will kind of go off a little bit. So you do want to make sure you calibrate it fairly often. But these things are, are good enough that if you're using them fairly often, you can use them a number of times in a row without calibrating them and be confident that your measurements are correct. So we're right about where we want to be. Um, pH is a little bit high, but this is on return water, so that's to be expected. And an EC of 1.2, which is a little bit low, but we're in the process of, of bringing EC up after a little bit of a clean out. So um, that's how the thing works. It's really, really helpful. It's really, really useful. If you don't have an IntelliDose, if you're not doing this with a, a different system, this is a really, really easy way to collect these types of measurements and know with confidence that your system is where you think it is. If you're an aquaponic producer and you're not using these tools, they can save you a lot of time, a lot of energy on temperature and pH, and it doesn't hurt to know EC from time to time. If you're a hydroponic producer and you're hand dosing, then you definitely need one of these. So. Um, we have these uh, on our site. You can find them on our site. You can find them other places as well. Um, they're, they're a handy little meter. They run about 250 bucks, um, which is not a bad deal. Each individual meter, a pH or an EC meter, a good one will run you about 130 a piece. So it's right about where it should be. Um, and you can leave this thing running in your system if you want to kind of constant monitor some things. So. Um, that's about it about this meter. Uh, check out the link below to find out more. If you have questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. And as always, please subscribe.